it's now time to describe the product. Describe the product is a full description of every product that you serve, everything on the menu. The information comes from the formulations or recipes. Includes physical and chemical characteristics. Is it fresh? Is it frozen? Cooked? Chopped? Why do we care? Like if it's fresh or frozen? Well, if you're using fresh broccoli and you're switching to frozen, your life just got easier, right? You no longer have to clean and sanitize the cutting board and wash your hands and clean the knife. You just open the box and dump them out. Conversely, if you're going from frozen to fresh, your life just got more complicated, so you have to change the uh, uh, the description of the product. Includes raw materials and ingredients used. Distribution requirements. Uh, maybe you're at a large base or a large uh, hotel that makes all the soups and sauces in one location. How do you get items from point A to point B? So that's all product description uh, longer than the recipe, which usually ends when you pull it out of the oven. This continues all the way up until you serve it to the guest. It may seem like a daunting task to do uh, all of your recipes, but the procedures are the same for so many of the items depending on how they're going to be used in your operation, meaning they're going to be served today, tomorrow. So, for example, an apple, a pear, a lettuce, a mushroom, banana, cucumber, tomato, on endive are all handled basically the same way. So you're doing a lot of cut and pasting. Receiving per standards, wash, clean hands, clean and sanitize the cutting boards, uh, all the same for a whole wide array of products. Beef, chicken, pork, fish, stew are all handled basically the same way. The temperature is going to be different from the beef to the chicken, but the other the concept is the same. So you're cutting and pasting. Only the specific temperature is different. So you receive at proper temperature, hold properly, cook and uh, cook to whatever temperature, etc. So it's not as bad as it seems from the outset. So with that in mind, we're going to group our recipes in order to make the task easier, depending on how the food will be served, whether it's going to be served now or going to be served later, the HACCP team will divide the recipes into three process steps. Okay, so depending on if you're going to serve the food now, or you're going to cook it and chill it and serve it later, uh, or it's never going to be cooked at all, those are the three process steps, so we're going to divide all of our recipes up into the three process steps. Process one would be there's no cooking required. We are not going to uh, wall our salad, let's say. We're not going to cook that product. So that'll be one group of recipes that will never cook, meaning we don't have cooking to uh, kill bacteria. Then the second group is going to be uh, cook and serve. We're going to cook that product and we're going to serve it immediately. And then the third would be complex, meaning we're going to cook it chill it, hold it, reheat it, and serve it. So complex doesn't mean difficult. It means you're going to cook it, chill it, and reheat it later. So that all those products are going to be done the same way. You're going to chill them to a certain temperature in a certain time. You're going to reheat them to a certain temperature. So you can uh, group it, and that'll make it uh, easier and faster to get the job done. So complex refers to food preparation trips through the danger zone, not complex like lasagna. Well, there's a lot of steps involved in that. That's not what we're talking about. We're just trying why they came up with that name, I have no idea. But they call it complex food preparation, meaning it is cooked, chilled, and heated later. So how many times it goes through the danger zone, not the difficulty of preparation. So for complex food items, we're going to receive them, store them, prepare them, cook them, cool them down, reheat them, hot hold till time for service and then we're going to serve them. That process is called the complex food preparation. Again we're taking all of our recipes we're going to divide them into three groups. This would be the third and the hardest group uh, where we know for that pile of recipes over there we're going to have to include uh, chilling and reheating those. So complex refers to cooking, chilling, then reheating, such as lasagna made now to serve tomorrow. Now you could make lasagna to serve today. As a, well, that wouldn't be the step two. That would be uh, cook and serve. But s maybe some of that lasagna, or maybe all of it, we're going to serve for midnight meal tonight, or we're going to serve it for tomorrow. Maybe we make that on Friday, so that on Sunday when we're short of staff, we don't have to uh, make the lasagna. So 
that would be uh, complex. So I'm just explaining this in uh, kind of over and over again, I guess you might think. Uh, but just to make sure people have tended not to get quite understand this. So I'm explaining it in several different ways so you get it. Food must be divided into one of three process steps based on how many times it goes through the danger zone. So zero times through the danger zone, no cooking required. That would be one of the three steps. Sorry, one of the three processes. Then the second one would be one time through the danger zone. You're going to cook that item and serve it like a hamburger. And then the third or complex would be two or more times through the danger zone. So you cooked it, chilled it, held it, reheated, and served it like lasagna or chili. So which of the following menu items most likely represent the food safety definition of a complex food preparation process? Meatloaf that you're making for lunch, tuna salad sandwich, grilled Philly sub sandwich, or steak Diane? Probably all three of the four items you're going to be preparing right now to be served right now. Tuna salad sandwich, I'm calling that complex because probably you made the tuna uh, several days ago. You usually would make enough for a few days, right, and put that back in the refrigerator. So I would say that that would probably fall into the complex uh, recipe pile. Now as we go through the HACCP um, plan, we're going to do a HACCP plan. So when we get to the end, we will have a HACCP plan that you can kind of use as a template. So it's a little harder to do in this environment when we're in a classroom together. But we would do it together. But in this case, I'm going to ask you to do it. And then in a couple of slides, I'm going to have my interpretation of what uh, describe the product would look like. So let's do the best we can in this circumstance. And we're going to describe the product. So this would be, again, you're on the HACCP team. And this is the first thing you're doing, which is describing your product. And just do this from memory. So you're not in the kitchen right now, no doubt. Uh, so just from your experience, we're going to do meatloaf. And we're going to describe how that meatloaf gets made. The ingredients that we're going to talk about. Don't ask me why I have uh, beef, turkey, and veal. I, years ago, when I put this together, I just, um, I don't know. I'm not sure I thought it would taste good, but I guess I thought uh, we, that causes us to look at the different temperatures of the of the various products and decide how to cook them. So that's my meatloaf. We ain't going to eat it anyway. So ground beef, turkey, and veal, eggs, celery, and onions are the ingredients. So we're going to start by just take a plain piece of paper. At the top right, see recipe card for the preparation and cooking. We're not going to bother to recopy that. You probably wouldn't in real life either. You're going to say, see the recipe card. But where d what happens with the recipe? It stops when you pull it out of the oven, right? It'll tell you to slice it into five ounce portions or something like that. But then it doesn't tell what else. So that's the difference between a recipe card and our described the product. Is we're taking it all the way up to when it is served to the guest. So start with your piece of paper you got at the top uh, meatloaf and you're the first thing you're writing down is uh, follow the recipe we're gonna take the recipe then from when we pulled it out of the oven so after removal from the oven what happens to it write that on any piece of paper for example you take it out of the oven where do you take it you take it to the um, prep table right and what do you do with it at the prep table and where does it go from the prep table then remember it's a we're going to uh, not remember I didn't tell you yet <laughs> we're doing complex right so we're making meatloaf that's going to be served tomorrow so you're going to chill you're going to pull it out of the oven you're going to then chill it and you're going to reheat it so just do the best you can to describe that and we'll be back uh, and uh, put it the um, put this on hold and uh, pause it and you can do that and then we'll discuss it in a couple of slides but as part of this presentation okay makes sense so having uh, hopefully successfully accomplished you described the product and you're looking at that and saying holy cow this is a lot of work I am not gonna do all that and I would say yes you are at some point people used to say well do you think this will ever be uh, like we'll all be doing this 
and I would say uh, probably not in my lifetime, no. But at some point, yes. Well, then the uh, USDA mandated that all public schools put in such a program, at which point I thought, yeah, you know what, this might happen in my lifetime because what's got to be next after the public schools, and that was a major investment for those people, um, what could be next? Well, I figure health care, military has got to be next. They're easy to mandate to. So it's coming. So, yes, you will be doing this. You will be mandated to do it by your health authority, your company, the new national foods are. President Obama, he thought it was important enough that his kids go to school and not have to worry about eating their peanut butter sandwich and dying from it. So um, there's a national foods are. Somebody's going to make you do it at some point. So you might as well do it now so you'll be fully schooling. Hey, I've been doing that for years. The days of food safety as we knew it are thankfully coming to a close thanks to the peanut butter fiasco. Steady stream of people dying from eating lettuce, the poor job we've done to clean it up, and the billions of dollars going into the research and implementation of new procedures. Thanks to this class, you'll be on the leading edge among the first, not the last, to get on board with HACCP. Keep in mind that this is your HACCP plan, so this is going to be how you do it in your operation. You may do it totally different than we do in my operation. You may say, well, we don't ever uh, chill the food down and serve it later. We serve our products right away. Well, good, then do it that way. But it is possible to, a lot of places do it, to prepare food now for uh, tomorrow, next week, next month. So uh, that's what we're doing because I, I need it to be complicated. I can't have you just uh, open up a uh, can and uh, heat up the, the ham and serve it. <laughs> it wouldn't teach us much. So that's why we're doing this, this method, but it's going to be however you do it. So I just came up with, from my experience, uh, here's what happens when the meatloaf comes out of the oven. So you've put the meatloaf together. You've put it in the uh, oven. You've cooked it to temperature. Now you bring it back to the prep table. What do you do? You take it out of the pan you cooked it in, right? And you're going to put it in a clean pan to be put away and chilled. You're going to cover it. You're going to so it won't dry out, right? You're going to label it the date that uh, whatever you do, the date that it was put in there, or the date that it is uh, has to come out by, or and the name of the product and who made it and whatever your standard is. Then you're going to take it to the refrigerator and chill it down. Maybe if you have a blast chili, you would take it there when needed to serve. You're going to take it out of the refrigerator. You're going to bring it back to the prep table because you need to remove the cover. Place it in the oven. Bring it back to temperature. Place it in the food warmer next to the serving line. Place it on the serving line as needed. Leftover food is going to be discarded because you already reheated it once. So that would be describe the product. Now the recipe came first and then this is what you do until you either serve it to the customer or you discard it. Why are we doing all of this? Because we're going to then go back and say at all of these various steps from the prep table, from the oven, to the prep table, uh, to the food warmer, to the serving line, all of those have food safety issues associated with them, right? So that's why we're describing the product so that we go back and we don't miss any of those steps. <coughs> 